This is the Tricity Bendix WDR1040W that I picked up last week. And it's a bit of a beast inside, really neat and tidy. Outside I was looking at it and I thought it looked a lot like uh, Zanussi, the way it has this two-part kind of clipped together box on the outside. The back comes off and the front comes off separately. So you can take off like the back and half of the sides to do work on it. Inside though, it's a pretty clean arrangement. This is why I'm a bit surprised about this machine being broken and I wonder if it will work. This is your dryer fan motor down underneath that, right in there. Driven by a belt, quite slack. You've got a fan housing there. Pushes air, I guess. Through an element and you've got two separate heater elements, probably a high and a low setting. You've got different temperature sensors all over the machine because, I don't know, I think these are a bit of a useless type of device really, the washer dryer, because unless you take half the laundry out, you're not really gonna get the thing to dry in any kind of a great hurry. They're kind of a real, they're real compromise on the dryer end. Lots of earthing. And then on the other side, you've got the old washing machine end. So you've got the cold fill here. Only cold fill on this one. Soap drawer, usual stuff. I'd like to get in and have a look under the bottom kind of an electromechanical control thing going on here because you've got the maybe it is an old timey it is it's an old electromechanical one you can see in there it's older than i thought it was just very clean apart from the filthy lint filter so look turning it around there it engages different parts of the um soap drawer i guess if it's on a pre-wash or not so I might take the back off and have a look. With the back off it, I can see that I was had the other way around with this plastic hose. This plastic hose, plastic pipe, is like an overflow from the soap drawer. Runs down along here into this big bottle. Big plastic bottle, which may or may not have a float switch or something. And it's the bottom half of that aluminium housing is plastic up there. And that goes down into the pump, which is right down there underneath that fluff filter that was so bad. There's a lot of dust all around, the, around the motor there, a lot of black black dust there. I'm guessing that's just belt, black belt. Or else it could be carbon from the brushes, but why would it have gotten spun up that way? Well, that probably is, it's all over. It looks to be a good clean machine. Really, really peculiarly, like really clean. A bit of stray plastic there. So I've got a load of old socks and gloves and workshop stuff in there just to give it a bit of a test wash. What I'm going to keep an eye out for is this broken seal here, which I reckon super glue or some other kind of glue would probably just because it's, it's a good clean tear. That might just some kind of soft glue I might just fix that. And I've got some soap up here. I've got it live. So I turned it on. Has anything happened yet? No, not yet. Whoa. Off already, we're on program 8 somehow. Freaking cool, I'd rather go up to uh, number 2 wash. While we're, in, while we're in process. Seems to be doing something, let's see. Took on some water, it's clicking through its cycle. Back to taking on water. Check it got that tight. Everything is live now, so I don't really want to touch it. So it could be that the brushes are gone in the motor because we've got a lot of black dust. That would be a reason for it stopping. But the most logical reason is because the uh, fluff filter was so full, and that's empty there, that's okay. Because the fluff filter was so full, it could just be that it's all getting stuck on the pump out cycle. The pump could still be needing to be fixed. So, should have a motor clicking on. There we go, motor's working. So I'll leave it here to run through the cycle. 
see what happens. So after a few moments of washing there, there's a bit of water collecting here. You can see it even siphoning or sucking kind of on a capillary down through that crack. The interlock is working. There's no, or very little, you need to put a bit of pressure on it. So with the door under normal pressure, that, that little crack in the seal goes down too far. And you've got this dribble running down the machine and a little puddle on your floor. So that's fault number one. So we're about 20 minutes in now. We're still washing, dripping. And around the side here, you can see the water level in the machine. And it's this kind of grossy brown color, but that is because the stuff I put in was gross and brown. So. And it is getting hot. I can feel that water in the hose there. It's getting hot. Oh, I've just noticed one of my suspension springs, one of my shock absorbers is smashed. So you can say it got a drop whenever it was coming out of the van. So that's just cream cracker. So it is moving about a bit more than it should be. That, that, that should be connected to that. So that does spell spill, uh, doom for this machine, which is unfortunate should look a bit like that one so positive connections that was that piece of plastic I found earlier on I've been washing away for quite some time now and it still hasn't drained out I've got it set up here to see if I can catch anything interesting so that's 56 degrees so it's set to do a 90 degree wash and so a few minutes later we're getting up on 74 degrees so we've gone into a pumping cycle but I don't see any water or else it's a filling cycle no it sounds like it's filling again Surely be ready to pump out now. So it was moving through the program just up until a second ago. It hasn't pumped out at all yet. It's clicked on through. And it's starting to wash again. Still nothing here. It's clicked along a bit in the program. Five is your long spin. So the machine has clicked back to the zero line. Full of water, full of clothes. Interlock, still on. So, I guess it's the pump. So it's stuck with water in it. Let's see that. It's kind of a ring of water there. So it's full of dirty water. That little crack in the seal means that it's leaking. So it's leaking out a little tiny dribble. You can just see it there. Do it again. So it's leaking constantly. So I've got to drain it off. So because I've got it outside, it's easy to just do it this way and siphon it down. I'm going to take the pump apart and just see what it looks like in the pump. So I've got the machine up and balanced on another machine and you can get in straight through the bottom to the pump. There's two cables in the pump. And just snap off. So I'm not too worried about getting stuff everywhere. So more treasure. This time we have some kind of jewelry thing, a pair of earrings maybe, a pair of hoopy earrings. Can you see that? Pretty clean. So in behind that piece of plastic shielding. Unless the pump just comes somehow straight out. That's pretty crazy. Okay, so is this pump dead? That's the question. Or was it just that that penny and other bits were blocking it? Well, let's get that out. The pump just opens up with a Phillips screwdriver. Feeling there's something very small in here sticking. Yeah, there's a, what do you call that? Just some piece of plastic. So I wonder if that works, it feels like it's okay. So in order to satisfy the strange compulsion of knowing whether or not that little tiny piece of plastic which I've now mislaid, there it is, was the cause of the pump. It's quite stiff, it's almost like fiberglass or something. Whatever it is, let's see if that was the cause of the pump. Not working. 
Um, I just want to run it on a rinse cycle, so rinses nine, nine, press play, and we'll see if it works and pumps up. Another person might have tested the pump using electricity, um, which would have been a good idea given that I had it out in my hand. I could have just put a bit of 220 volt across it and saw if it worked, but this, I guess, is the slower and more awkward way of doing it. So that's it on the second cycle. Pretty healthy pump that. So it is just a little piece of plastic like this. That's that, as wide as two fingers, so you're talking 35 millimeters long maybe. It really looks like fiberglass or something. I don't know what that would be, probably something gross if it's in a washing machine, a little fiberglass stick. Don't know. Seems quite a healthy spin on that, even with a broken shock. So the pump continues to run as the machine spins to take any last drips out of it. And so as a last little observation of this machine, tumble dryer fan motor belt it's pretty pretty dead it's a little cracks in it strangely at the end of the cycle there for the rinse out cycle it rinsed drained out and then the fan came on and it kind of agitated and fanned the clothes not didn't dry them but it just gave them a bit of a, a bit of a freshen up but yeah that belt's not going to last long so yet another reason to scrap this machine so I've now got a machine that will wash laundry, but there's a few things wrong with it. One is the seal on the door, it's broken, and a new door seal could be quite expensive because it's a tumble dryer as well, so it'll have a tumble dryer blower fan coming down the top of that seal. The other thing is the suspension strut in there, the shock absorber is dead, completely broken, so I'd have to get a new one of those. And then up here on top, the third thing I found is this tumble dryer fan motor fan drive belt it's got some pretty big cracks in it so this one's for the scrap heap or the brick one or the other thanks for watching